commentary on the first five books of the Bible. But my, I, the rest is I read on Audible, and I read about a book a month on Audible, and I, it's like it's like dessert for me. I, I, I just, it's so relaxing. So California, you're in California right now, I'm assuming, yes? I am indeed, violating the rules regularly. I had uh, I had a uh, Sabbath dinner Friday night with uh, seven friends of mine in Santa Monica. Well, I announced you... it on the radio, and I invited them to arrest me. <laughs> so, so it's fair to say you didn't get arrested. Too bad, because then we could show uh, how dangerous uh, Newsom and and Garcetti and the rest of these totalitarians are. I mean, th read my column this week. I hope your people will read my column. It's up at townhall.com or my own website, Dennis Prager. Uh, and I call it rehearsal. The re this is a dress rehearsal for a police state. That Americans overwhelmingly obey irrational, immoral laws. And uh, there is like even very few people, and they're considered eccentric. Uh, I mean, people went for an Easter service in their cars, stayed in their cars in the church parking lot, and the police came to disperse them. This is the United States of America. In the name of health, you can suppress liberty in America. What, what, so let's just say so that if you don't agree with that, what is the right thing to do? You're in L.A. What Sweden I, did. Sweden was the only country on earth that kept its sense. And, and if, if we had done what Sweden did at the rate of Sweden's deaths, we would have 20,000 more Americans the entire time would have died if, at the same rate of Sweden. But we are, it's either 12 or 20, I don't remember, and because I figured it out earlier. And given how many people will die because of the, uh, of the uh, lockdown, the people who are not getting surgeries, the people who are not going uh, to uh, hospitals, the people who are dying at home, the people committing suicide, the people going back on drugs, dwarfs any of that, plus the ruined lives because of this this unprecedented error in human history of, of uh, uh, India, 1 billion, 300 million people, 800 deaths, and they, they uh, are putting people on starvation they don't have uh they don't have uh, uh uh insurance policies like we do to take care of them if they don't have if they don't have food uh the un just predicted 36 countries will have a famine because of what was just done now this is the greatest error in the history of the human race and i never engage in hyperbole this is the great, that's a pretty strong statement to make. This is well, the greatest because, yeah. era in the, in the human race. Yes, in, in, in recorded history. Correct. Give me, give me, give me a, an example. You, know, you could say World War II, but World War II was an evil, but it wasn't an error. Oh, error. Okay, evil versus error. So what, what, what are some errors that you would say? So categorize what are some errors. There, there's the nothing comparable. The world has never decided to make a unified error. Thank God for Sweden, because that's why the quote-unquote experts one of the most, uh, 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 I'm trying to not overstate because uh, I'm so angry at them. They are the most overrated group of humans on earth. Experts are almost all idiot savants. They know their field and they have no wisdom. So they are worthless, worse than worthless. Two million prediction of deaths in the United States and everybody panicked. Half the deaths in Sweden, by the way, are in nursing homes. Wow, interesting stat. Half the half the deaths in the uh, Sweden yeah. are in nursing homes. So, 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 you're President Trump. You're President Trump. You. I know you and I talked about you running for office one time. You said you had no desire, but let's just say you're President Trump. President Dennis Prager. You're getting news that a virus is spreading in Wuhan, China. Okay. And it comes out, you know, yes, there is a virus. Yes, it's out there. You're seeing some of the stuff that's taking place. It's around late February, March. Everybody's starting to give you advice on what to do. You're hearing this name popping out, Anthony Fauci. He worked on AIDS back in the 80s. And, and all these names are coming up. What are you doing if you're the president? You stop flights from China, which he did, by the way, and, and was uh, attacked by Joe Biden for doing so. You don't hear about that in the New York Times, but it's it's, it's on the record. He, he he attacked the president 
I was January 31st, if I'm not mistaken. And he, he uh, that's when the president against, oh, people say, oh, that's racist, xenophobic. Uh, you, you know, you're, it's part of your war against China. But he was right to do so. Uh, but I would never have said all of America, you can no longer work. We will shatter tens of millions of lives. We will send people back to drug use. We will, we will end your dream of the business you started. The right now, what is it? 50 something thousand Americans, uh, in, 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 uh, in 1957, we law, what was it? 57? Uh, yeah, 120,000 Americans when we only had 200 million Americans. So it'd be 180,000. They didn't close one business. They didn't close it in for the, for the Hong Kong flu in 69 when over 100,000 Americans died. We are a new people. We are cowards. We believe that, uh, that, uh, safety is God. When I want to be safe. Safe is a new word, and it's like no safe spaces. The movie Adam Carolla and I made, it's about the colleges. Oh, there's somebody coming to college you don't agree with. Please go to a safe space where you can have, uh, we'll give you uh, Play-Doh and hot chocolate and stuffed animals. I'm not kidding. That is what is given to the college kids. If somebody comes to college and they don't feel safe, there's no such thing as safe. Safe is in the grave. Life is not safe. Grow up, but we, we are run by the immature. Who, who influences who influences this decision to be made? Because there was so much pressure being made by media to shut down, and then Fauci recommends a shutdown, and then you got 26, 27 million people applying for unemployment, checks are being made, you know, all this stuff is taking place. Does this kind of set the precedence in the future when another election year is coming up for somebody to say, well, listen, let's go out there and make sure we have another pandemic to shut down the economy again, to hurt somebody else. Do you see this being a play out of a, being added to a playbook for the future? It's not, it's not a question. As in life, it's a, it's a rule. It's very hard to do something the first time. It is very easy to do something the second time, whether it's good or bad. That's a rule of life. This is just the first time they will do it. If the Democrats have the House, Senate, and presidency, they will do it for global warming. Because remember, this is just 50,000 or 80,000 Americans, but they believe that climate change, a.k.a. global warming, is existential. It's an existential threat, meaning a threat to the existence of the human race, not, not to 80,000 the human race. So if we could close down people's work and livelihood for for 80,000, we can certainly do it for the human race. But but, but I guess my question for you would be, do you foresee this happening again yes. and again there's and no, again in no, the future? There's no doubt in my mind. Unless Americans object strenuously, uh, and if they elect a Democrat, then the Democrats will have been rewarded for being the party. Now, some Republicans are for this, too. But generally speaking, there is a huge uh, right-left divide on this issue. So so, so I, I, I've, I've interviewed a lot of different people that have come on board and we've sat down with them, whether it's a General Spalding or last night it was a Dr. Buttar or jo Dr. Judy Mikovits or you know, uh, uh, Gordon Chang and some of these names, you know, uh, while I'm mentioning this about coronavirus or Daniel DeMartino Booth, which I, I'm sure you know who she is, the economist. There's a lot of different stories that are coming out about uh, what's going on with this. My biggest concern is the following, is if media has this much control to use fear where every single time there's a shutdown and every time we continue doing this, a lot of people that are following my content, they're small business owners, they're entrepreneurs. These are people that are running a business for themselves. If every time there's a shutdown, the poor can handle it, the rich can handle it, middle America cannot handle it. Because I had a guy that was giving me a haircut this week. He came over here, my main friend, main guy that gives me haircuts. He brought his stepson and his stepson started cutting people's hairs. And I said, so how's everything? It's a 19 year old kid. I said, how's everything? He said, amazing. 
I said, really, why is it amazing? He says, man, I mean, I applied for unemployment. I made more money in the last week than I made in the last two months. It's amazing. He's hopeful that this continues for a few months. So That's right. I don't see the poor doing bad during times like this. Those that are getting unemployed, they're getting better checks than they did before. I don't see the rich being affected by this because they have money. They can handle this for a couple of years. I don't think you're affected by this. I think you're probably going to be fine saying you can probably handle this because you've made some good decisions over your career. But I see middle America getting crushed right now at a time like this. So right. my concern becomes the following. Here's my concern. Here's my concern. I've come to work every day since they shut it down. Only three days I've not been at my office. I'm at my office right now. I'm not, I'm not at a, I'm not at my house. I'm at my office. I run a company. I got 14,500 insurance agents. We got 130 offices. I have employees over here. Slowly but surely we're getting people to come back up. We kept 20% of our employees. We're not, we're not shutting down anything, but I knew there was going to be a risk of getting fined. And what if people complain, all this other stuff. I, my philosophy is this, you've read more. I kind of want to hear your uh, uh, feedback on this. Can the government just tell you that you can't go to work and shut you down and tell small business owners to not go to work? Does the government have that kind of authority to tell us what to do with our day-to-day -day business? No, but uh, Americans have accepted it. And that's what's so scary. The, uh, the end of the, of, the, of the national anthem is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Uh, well, 10 years, 20 years before this, uh, uh, I, I said that is no longer true. It is not the land of the free because Americans don't value freedom. The left has convinced them that being taken care of is more important than liberty. And that is the human nature. The left comports with human nature. Get yourself taken care of. That's more important than liberty. And as, as for brave, give me a break. Uh, I mean, people want to be safe. My father enlisted in World War II. He didn't have to. He, he, he was beyond the age of draft, and he had a child. He was exempt. And he said, I'm not going to sit home while, while other kids get killed fighting Hitler and, and the Japanese. Went into the Navy. He was in the Pacific for three years. Uh, and uh, if, if you'd have said to him, you know, uh, Max Prager, that's, uh, that's not safe. He'd have looked at you, excuse me? Going to war is not safe? Oh, thank you. That's, I didn't think of that. Not safe? If we are guided by safe, not only is the society over, individual lives are. I, I give you my classic example. For 30 years, I've been taking groups around the world in cruise ships and also uh, land trips in Israel. So for 30 years, people have called my show and said, Dennis, God, I really would love to visit Israel, the Holy Land, and so on. But I'm waiting till it's safe. <laughs> so I always said to them for 30 years, then you will never go. It will never be safe. Don't go. And I've gone every year, uh, for, uh, every other year for 30 years. So, so <laughs> uh, if I'd have led a life to be safe... I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't have gone to 130 countries. I wouldn't have decided to conduct orchestras. I'm not a trained musician. I, I am self-taught, but but I, I took the unsafe route, and and I and I did something very challenging, and that is learn to conduct orchestras. If you want to lead a safe life, you will die, and on your tombstone it will be written: "Here lies so and so. She led a safe life." And it's a pointless, worthless, empty life. What do you say to people that say, Dennis, that's a pretty irresponsible statement to make? I mean, you know, you, say you, you will lead an empty life. Congratulations. You made your choice. You have chosen safety over living fully. Everybody can make their choice. I, my job is to be clarifier. This is the choice you have made. You have chosen safety over living. My task in life is not to live forever. Uh, this will come as a shock. We all die. Since we all die, I am much more interested in living fully than not dying. And this has become a very big filtering system because you're noticing how many people are uh, 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 fine with it and how many people are not. But I believe there's a community in the middle that they're undecided because I'll give you a perfect idea. My family, we have people that believe in vaccine and we have people who don't believe in vaccine and then we have people who are in the middle. 
I was in the military and I got, the moment I joined the army, they gave me 11 shots on my shoulder and it was air guns. Here you go. And we had to sign something saying, if something happens to you later on, you're government property for eight years. We're sorry we did this, but we're testing. And they gave us all these vaccines and we took them. But we get these heated debates with vaccines, right? You, you, should, it's, you shouldn't do it. It's a pr propaganda. It's a gates. It's this, it's that. There's a lot of people in America, forget about the people that say uh, anti-vaccine and people that say pro-vaccine and they're not willing to be, uh, ch change their minds. I'm talking about people in the middle right now in America that are saying, I, I do want to go back to work. I don't want my business to go out of business, but I also don't want to do the irresponsible thing because I want to hurt my family. Those who are in the middle, if you could take a minute or two to give them a, an argument to say, here's why you ought to consider opening up outside of what you just said, which was brilliant. You want to live a safe life? Go for it. But I'm talking about to the people that are not arguing. They want to be sold. If you can give me a good argument, they're the jury. They're sitting there saying, Dennis, please sell me on why I ought to be more open to it. What would you say to them? If you're not over 75 and you don't have a, uh, an underlying illness, uh, you, your chance of dying from COVID-19 is approximately the same as your chance of getting killed in a car accident. Therefore, I suggest you not drive to work uh, either. In fact, I don't even, you shouldn't walk to work either. You may get hit by a car. Uh, people are ignorant as to the risk on this issue. It is almost impossible for a child to die from COVID-19. They are more likely to drown in a bathtub than die of COVID-19 if they are a child. We should never have closed the schools. That they didn't close the schools in, uh, uh, in, in Sweden, and I don't think in Singapore, but I'm not certain about Singapore. But they didn't in Sweden. Uh, so I, I, it, it, the ignorance is is dre the ignorance is created by the panic of the most irresponsible institution on earth, the media. Twenty four seven news is a curse. I don't watch. I am happy. I listen to music. I read constantly. I know more about this virus than the vast majority of lay people. I have to. I have to report on it three hours a day on my radio show. I have to write about it in my column. I am up on this issue. I follow it avidly. And uh, the risk is minuscule if you are healthy. You, will, you, will prob you may well get it. Not probably. You may well get it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The 80% of the people who get it don't even know it. Uh, Dennis, uh, by the way, if you're from Sweden, comment below that you're from Sweden. I just saw five people saying I'm in Sweden. I'm curious to know, if you're from Sweden, do me a favor and comment. Give me a pen if you don't mind. Uh, if you're from Sweden, comment and let us know how are things in Sweden or Singapore. Let us know if you can just kind of give us an update how things are in Sweden. I saw a handful of people say they're from Sweden. So, okay, Dennis, next question. So let's just say we go the way we're going right now. Shutdown stays the way it is in California, and they lag it. Garcetti lags it in L.A., Newsom lags it, and they're going through what they're going. What, what is the consequences of this? I saw somebody ask this question. What are the consequences of this? five, ten years from now? Not short-term, but long-term. I, 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 uh, I don't make such predictions because it's impossible to know. I can only say that the demise, uh, they, what I just read was about one-third of mom-and-pop businesses will go out of business. So therefore, whereas you now had Jerry's Restaurant you will now have a, a, another uh, uh, another ch another chain, uh, another Subway, uh, a, another um, Chipotle, uh, or, or what have you. The, so you will still be able to eat, but it will end the uh, or begin to end the ability of people to run what we really enjoy, which is a local restaurant where you know the people, they know you, where the food is better than at a chain. And so uh, the, the country will be run by gigantic businesses uh, and, and instead of the great joy of America, which is exactly that middle class that you were uh, that you were talking about, that you were referring to. So uh, it, it's the only good thing that might come out of it is more people will, will not send their kids to college for seventy thousand dollars a year <laughs> and waste their money. That's the one silver lining I could see in this. I got Armin, uh, wasteland. I got Armin Nasiri from uh, uh, from uh, 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 Sweden who's saying restaurants and gyms are closed. They're packed. 
They uh, didn't shut down. You cannot visit elderly homes, is what he's saying. Nothing's closed. The only thing they have is you cannot go to a place with more than 50 people. That's, That's he's exactly got. correct. He got it right. Half the deaths in Sweden are in elderly homes, by the way, which is an unbelievable tragedy, but it should show you how little the risk is to the rest of, the, of humanity. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, 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 Dennis, uh, somebody asked the question, what are your thoughts about Bill Gates? It's a handful of people have been asking this question. What do you think about Bill Gates? I think that uh, the belief in America that if you make a lot of money, you have wisdom uh, is one of the stupidest notions the human species can hold. There is no relationship between making a ton of money and wisdom. You, you, you are only good at one thing, which is fine. I don't knock it. You're good at making money. Do we care what great shortstops think? Why isn't anybody talking to Derek Jeter? I am as interested in Derek Jeter's views in, uh, about the world as I am in Bill Gates. Derek Jeter's the great shortstop. Bill Gates is a great entrepreneur. So what? So whose opinion should we be concerned about? If you're saying people who if, have earned people who have earned our right to be considered wise. That's it. They're the only people. Only. But because don't, we don't we don't value wisdom any longer, secular society values knowledge, not wisdom. So we think if you're a professor, you will have good advice. But there is no correlation between knowledge and wisdom. And there's no correlation between being a billionaire and wisdom. This is, this is, it is the age, I wrote about this 25 years ago. We live in the age of non-wisdom. So, I'm sorry, Dennis, whose advice do you take? So, if you're saying somebody oh, with wisdom... There, there, are, there are so many people that I, that I believe are wise, including my best friends. <laughs> I have friends who are 50 times wiser than Bill Gates. They, they, they run rings around Bill Gates with regard to wisdom. Uh, or, or, or the people that I read, people I read on the internet, like Victor Davis Hanson, the, who happens to also be a professor. That guy is wise. Uh, and, you know, the, um, uh, what's the professor, of course, in Toronto, um, me and names, you know, the, you, you know, the, uh, Jordan Peterson. Yes. That man has wisdom. Yeah. There, you, wisdom is earned. I, I earn your, I, I have a billion views a year at PragerU. Uh, I have 600,000 views every week to my, my, my fireside chat. I have X numbers of readers. I have earned these people's respect over the course of a very long life. That's how it works. You, that is the reason most of the time in the past we have, uh, we have generally associated older age with wisdom because not because they're, only because they've lived longer, but because they have earned with the respect of people. You don't look to a 20-year-old for wisdom. And when I was 20, I didn't assume I had any. I knew I had to learn from others. We're not asking 20-year-olds, what should we do about the, about the virus? They could be brilliant. They could be a Harvard genius, but we don't care because they didn't earn our, our the, the credentials of wisdom. Then it's actually, that sounds that could sound a little bit arrogant. Well, let, let me let me let me argue, and then you can come back and uh, 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 answer this one. Some may say Bill Gates has also earned the respect and the wisdom from people who follow him for decades. The guys, you're right. Richard and anybody, you're right. And anybody, so you you who listen to Gates, you have to ask yourself: Am I am I listening to him because of his wealth or because of his wisdom? If he has earned the right for you. As a wise person, listen to him. I, I think he's a fool. But if you think he's wise, obviously. Why do you I'm think sorry. Because of the, of the things that he has said now with regard to he's a totally, he who lives in this mansion, who, who goes anywhere he wants. Uh, he, I don't even think literally, I don't think he can identify with the guy who's lost his business. And I don't blame him. I don't think it's possible in general to identify with people in completely different circumstances. We can sympathize. It is almost impossible. I can't empathize with, with, with my wife who gave birth. I, uh, okay? I can't empathize with childbirth. 
I can sympathize, but I can't empathize. I don't think Bill Gates can empathize with the guy who who has just lost his life savings because because of this lockdown. Bill Gates knows what's going to happen with regard to COVID no better than I do and probably worse. Dennis, you sound like a, just so you know, you sound like a liberal talk show host because you're, you're calling out a billionaire entrepreneur. You're a conservative. What do you say to people that say Donald Trump is a billionaire? But it is to go shopping. Hold on, you're breaking up. Wait, you're breaking up a drop. What do I say to people who say Donald Trump is what? So what do you say to people that say, well, this president, he doesn't know what it is to be middle America. He's been rich his entire life. You're right. It, That's are, fine. I don't say he does. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I, I, you're saying listen to people that have wisdom. So does yes. that mean somebody who is rich doesn't have the wisdom to no, go? no, no. I was only mentioning not at all. There are rich people who have wisdom. There are poor people with wisdom. Wisdom does not know. Uh, all I'm saying is ask people think. <laughs> Excuse me. People think <clears throat> that if you have a PhD, you have wisdom. People think if you have a lot of money, you have wisdom. Both are wrong. PhD means you have knowledge and only knowledge in the area you have a PhD in. Got it. And, and, and people who have a billion dollars, clearly, I mean, I admire Gates tremendously for what he did with Microsoft. It's a revolution. It's astonishing. I, I thank him for his inventions. But I have zero interest in his views on the virus or, or the lockdown. He has not earned my, my attention span in that regard. If he had something to say about computers, I would tune in in a, in a, in a nanosecond. So, okay, so now let's, let's separate uh, uh, Gates and let's separate Trump. So do you believe in Anthony Fauci's wisdom? No. Anthony Fauci, all Anthony Fauci knows is medicine. His, he, he, he should talk about a lockdown as much as Derek Jeter, the famous Yankee shortstop. I am told, these people, their record, the record of these people, the only reason this happened is because of the people in his profession who said 2.2 million Americans will die. So far, 50,000 have. And if you believe it's because of the lockdown, I have a bridge for you. Because uh, Sweden didn't have a lockdown, and, and it has a tiny percentage more uh, of deaths than we do. But they didn't they didn't shatter their economy. By the way, do you know how many people I, I don't know if I, I think I said it to you uh, uh, three. The, maybe I didn't. The United Nations, the U.N., which I'm not a fan of, the U.N. just issued a report. Nicholas Kristof reported this big liberal uh, columnist, New York Times. Three dozen countries will experience famine because of this lockdown. The number of people who will die because of the lockdown may be greater than the number of people who die because of the of the illness. The starvation that will take place, uh, the people who, you know, there was an article about, a, you know, poor people in Cambodia. I was in Cambodia. These people are still shell-shocked from, from the genocide that happened in their country uh, in the 70s under the communist regime uh, and and they're finally getting out of it and now everything they sell to the west nobody's buying and that was their that was their stepping stone out of poverty same thing in bangladesh it's it's a trap what is happening in the world because of this idiocy india uh, the, a, a million a billion 300 million people lot sends people out of work in the hundreds of millions 800 people have died in india there are probably more people who were run over by, by cows in the course of a year in India. That was a joke for the record. But I understand what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It, it's, it's a little bit confusing for the audience right now. A lot of people are saying, I'm getting confused. And here's why I think they're saying they're getting confused and I'm watching them. They're saying that this wisdom thing is confusing. So I asked, okay, you said, if I want to talk to somebody about entrepreneurship and technology, I'll talk to Gates, okay? Because he has wisdom in hypothetically. Trump is Trump. Then I said, Anthony Fauci. Then he said, Anthony Fauci doesn't have wisdom in the area of lockdown. Anthony okay. Fauci was asked when we should stop the lockdown. And he said, when we approach zero deaths. That's, that's answer is idiocy. Idiocy. It's not just not wisdom. It's it's the opposite of wisdom. It is completely destructive. 
Can you elaborate? Yes. <laughs> the, the amount of suffering and death that is caused by the lockdown is infinitely greater than a, than a handful of COVID deaths as you approach zero. I, it, it's beyond belief. I can't, you know, or worse, uh, uh, Cuomo, who's, who, oh, listen, what, listen to Governor Cuomo. He's so impressive. Governor Cuomo said a month ago, I play it on my radio show regularly. If my lockdown of New York State saves one life, I will go to bed happy. What becomes a priority at a time like this? What is the priority? Is it to get okay. everybody? All right. Here is, the, here is the key to becoming an adult. Most, for your young listeners, here's a revelation. Most people never become adults. They, they grow, they get older, but they don't become adults. You become an adult when you decide to become an adult. One of the keys of being an adult is to always ask this question. What is the price? A child doesn't understand that. An adult should. Everything comes with a price. If you get married, what is the price of marrying? What is the price of staying single? What is the price of having children? What is the price of not having children? That is the mature way to lead life. Always ask, what is the price of putting tens of millions of Americans out of work? What is the price of not? What is the price of depriving people of the right to uh, to, to go around? I, I broadcast from Glendale, California. They made an announcement. Even if you are walking your pet, you have to wear a mask. Of course, I don't wear a mask when I take a walk in Glendale, California. I hope they arrest me. These people are fools running Glendale, California, and most other cities. Because I'll tell you why. Because they don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea how it's communicated. And they want to look. They have a new, this is the new motto in America. The new motto is better safe than sorry. And that's it. That's the motto of the country. That's why the country may fail. The United States of America is an experiment in liberty and bravery. We are showing neither. By the way, I'm curious for everybody that's watching this right now, how many guys lost your jobs or you run a business and you're about to shut down your business? If you lost your job or you are about to lose your business, comment below. I'm curious to know how many people are going through that uh, uh, challenge right now. How about the stimulus? How about all these times that we're bailing out another check and another check, another check, another check, another check? It's like DJ Khaled, another one. It's constantly another check coming out. How long can we sustain this, sending checks to people? We well, can well, according to the left, forever. The, 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 that the country will keep printing monopoly money does not trouble them because their view is the more people dependent upon the government, the greater the power for the Democratic Party. And they're right. That's exactly right. That's why all government workers vote Democrat and almost all middle-class uh, business owners vote Republican. People who take care of themselves and others, they vote Republican. People who are taken care of, they vote Democrat. It's a bold statement right there. It's a very bold statement right there when you're saying something. Well, it's either true or not true. I don't know if it's bold. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not far off with you disagreeing on this. I run a sales organization. I can tell you there's people that are constantly wanting leads, and there are those that go find their leads. Typically, the guys that find their leads, they don't care if you give them leads. They're fine if you don't send them leads because they figure out a way to make their own money. Those who rely on leads are the ones that typically – complain the most. I don't know why this law is in the world of sales, but some of it applies also in life. My father was the president of a synagogue and I was, a, I was a little kid and I'll never forget him saying, you know, the people we give free membership in the synagogue to are the ones who complain the most. <laughs> There's so much truth behind that. Yeah. That's so amazing. There's so much truth behind that. You know, uh, 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 I want to share this with you. I had a lady that called me. Her and I were talking. This is a woman who 
one time we're having this conversation together and she told me, she says, you know what's the closest thing a man will ever experience to giving birth? I said, what's that? That's starting a business. I said, tell me, tell me what you mean by that. She says, I've given birth to two kids and I've started a business. She says, when I gave birth to, to my kids, it, labor lasted for 24 hours. She said, but when I started a company, that pain lasted for five years. Every other day, we almost went out of business. It was very painful. She said, what most people don't realize is when somebody starts their own business, it is a form of their baby. It is a form of their baby that they put the time into starting the company. So for me, when I get a lot of calls that people call me and they're founders, they're entrepreneurs, they run businesses, I tell them, I said, is this your baby? Yes. How do you take care of your baby? I protect it. Make sure you protect your baby because no one's going to care more about your baby than you are. And this is why you're seeing a lot of people here in Dallas. A lady had her uh, hair salon and she kept it open. African-American lady has her hair salon and she keeps it open. And they came down and they say, you have to shut this place down. This is not an essential business. She says, you can find me. I'm not shutting this place down. I'm keeping my business open because I have to make my money. I have to go out there and make my money. So I'm just, uh, what I'm most curious about, Rob, uh, uh, Dennis, is not that we disagree on a lot of things you're saying. I just asked the question because I'm, asking a question of what some generations may be thinking about because they may disagree with you. And I want to get some discourse here. The part I'm curious about is the following. How long are people just going to say, okay, okay, fine. Yes, I'll follow the rules. No problem. How long do you think that's going to last where we the people all of a sudden are going to say, listen, I'm just not listening to you. I'm going to get to work. In California, some people went to the beach this past weekend because uh, we got hot weather. And uh, I was thrilled that they went to the beach. And uh, Governor Newsom uh, just uh, made an announcement that he's going to clamp down with more laws to make sure this doesn't happen. Uh, this is the, the best example, one of the better, not the best, but a, a really good example of the moral necessity of civil disobedience which is particularly funny since California is a sanctuary state r violating federal law on, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on illegal, uh, uh, illegal immigrants into the United States. So he, he's a big fan of civil disobedience, uh, and so am I when it's moral. Uh, this, this, uh, this, is the, this is the test. Are we the land of the free or the home of the brave? or the land of snitchers. Uh, uh, Mayor de Blasio told New Yorkers to photograph people who uh, are gathering in, in, you know, more than two people or whatever it is uh, and uh, outside and take photos and send it to the police. Th this is, this is truly, this is what re people should read my column this week. It's at the uh, town hall, Dennis Uh It's, it's, we, it is the, it is literally the skeletal uh, creation or the, the bases of, of a of a police state. Uh, I never thought this would happen in America. I have to say, I'm not an optimist in life. I'm an optimist for my own life, but I'm not an optimist for the world. There's been too much evil. I'm not an idiot. Uh, but I never thought that I would live to see Americans go, yes, I, I will do something stupid. Yes, uh, I, I will allow my business to be crushed uh, because, uh, because I, I'm in Idaho but half, more than half the deaths of, in America are happening in the New York metropolitan area. But I should go bankrupt here in Idaho. I, I don't think people are going to just sit around. I I, well, they have. I'm I sorry. They have. Oh, what, what I think, here's what I think about the following. You know, when you got a father and the kid is pulling on the jacket, some fathers can only take four times. Some fathers are, can take it ten times. I some hope you're right. But there's no father in the world that will let the kid do that for days. I don't think that's going to happen. I think people are going to get sick of it, and they're going to respond. And once they do, uh, I've been through it. I'm from Iran. So to me, I'm used to this kind of stuff. This is very normal for somebody that was born and raised in Iran. In America, this is weird. But to us that came from Iran, this is just another day in Iran. I mean, weird. That's things right. That's correct. This I, is police state. Yeah, I don't see this thing being, being being going on too long. I see people getting... Well, it's, it's, uh, listen, it's astonishing that it's gone on this long. We're, we're talking now six weeks. I agree. It was supposed to be 15 days. It's now six weeks. Well, you know, you you're, you're, there, there are people who rely on people like Fauci and Trump and the experts to make the right decision. And when the data comes out, and some of these data guys are coming out and projecting 2 million deaths by this time, and we're not hitting those numbers. That, that scares the hell out of a lot of people. And a lot of people, you know, the fear tactics that's going to, do you want your parents to die? 
Do you want your kids to die? Do you want this person to die? And they're using all these, you know, stories that you're seeing. Uh, I can see that being very effective, but I just think people realize and listen, I got it. It happened. Yes, we understand. I just need to make sure I'm ready to get back and we're going to get back to work. Texas, just so you know, I don't know if you know what's going on this Friday with Texas. Restaurants, many of them are opening up this Friday. Not the ones that are corporate. The corporate ones are not opening up in Texas, but a lot of, a lot of the companies, restaurants are opening up this Friday. My wife just texted me right now. She said, what restaurant do you want to go eat? I said, uh, check with Fleming's, Papa Bro's. And she called Fleming's. They're not opening up, but Fleming's headquarters, uh, you know, they're, they're hesitating. They're not giving green light. Papa Bro's, they don't know yet. Capital Grill is most likely opening up. So I'm going to have my burrata cheese salad this Friday, by the way, just so you know. I, I envy you. I, I live in, in, um, in, in, in the police state of California. You know, see, so few people have died in this state. It's, by the way, I'll give you another example of how Americans are misled. They're constantly told, oh, the number of cases is skyrocketing. The number of cases, do you, people not realize that the more people who actually have had this, the better it is? It shows you how few people die. What's better if a million people, let's say we have a thousand people died in a given state. What's better? that a million had the disease or a hundred thousand had the disease? Obviously a million. So the, the number, oh my God, look at how many cases. Sweden hopes it had, the whole country had cases. Then they're immune. The number of cases is not a bad thing. The number of deaths is a bad thing. Number of cases is actually a good thing. But they'll never have a guy like me on CNN. And the two doctors, the two ER doctors who had four or five million views, Bakers. Bakersfield, California doctors, YouTube took it down. I know. And what's weird about it is it's... it's an There's nothing weird. Forgive me. It's the only time I'm disagreeing with you the whole time. It is not weird at all that YouTube took it down. Google is a left-wing site. That And if you differ with them, they don't want you heard. Here's what I mean by what's weird about it. They took it down from a left-wing network. It was on ABC when they took it down. Did, did you ever see the interview with the CEO of YouTube with, on ABC on 60 Minutes? Did you ever watch that? No. I'll text it to you afterwards. You have to yeah. watch it. you got to watch yeah. it. Because you're seeing the ABC 60 Minute lady sitting there calling out the CEO of YouTube saying, why are you letting all these journalists keep making content? They're not journalists. We're journalists. We do proper vetting and investigation. And she said, we're not a journalistic site. We're a social media site. She says, you're not a social media site. You're a content creating journalistic site. So the, the, the battle going back and forth, mainstream media cannot stand a lot of these guys that are creating content on YouTube. By the of way, course. How are you guys doing with Prager University? Are you guys still getting challenges or not that much? Yeah, of course. But we you know, look, we have a billion views a year. It's a, I, I invite your your many, many uh, listeners and, and viewers to go to PragerU.com. If your kids, by the way, you want to give wisdom to your kids, that's the place. Prager, P-R-A-G-E-R-U, PragerUniversity.com. We, uh, we have former prime ministers, Pulitzer Prize winners, professors, it's it's a very deep website, and they're all five minute courses. So your even your kid will be able to be that attentive. But uh, but uh, I, I'm telling you uh, this: what they did on YouTube to these doctors, this I mean to say that the two uh, these are not retired people. They are currently saving lives in California at a hospital. That these people are giving misinformation. That, that's really scary. Dennis, how many billionaire uh, libertarians and independents do you know? you got to know a few of them. I know you and I used to go to, uh, 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 what was his house? Wayne Hughes' house in, uh, in Malibu, and we used to do right. that. That was like 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, right. How many billionaire independents and libertarians do you know? I don't, I, not I don't know personally many. I don't know personally many, but go on. Yeah, my point is, why, 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 like, when, when CNN, Ted Turner started CNN, 24-hour news network, and yeah. crushed it, you know, when Zuck starts Facebook, or, you know, Jack, Dorothy, Elon, all these guys are starting what they're creating, 
Why, why aren't these libertarians independent? Uh, 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 this is a puzzle to me. Um, uh, Jeff Bezos buys the Washington Post. <laughs> why doesn't a billionaire buy, uh, who's conservative, buy the LA Times? Why don't they do? Mark Benioff just bought Time Magazine a year and a half ago. Yeah, but it's a, it's, it's a rag sheet, Time Magazine. It's a propaganda sheet. It, 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 is, it, it is the worst. Newsweek is, is, is light years above it. At least it has alternate opinions. I agree, but what I'm saying to you is why didn't somebody else buy Time Magazine? Uh, I agree. You know why? As I've said my whole life, there's a civil war in America, but only one side is fighting. The left. That, that's just that's just it, it, conservatives are naive. They they're they're you know they're happy to be with their family, their business, their church, and, and you know don't bother me with uh, with being an, being active. I think conservatives like to be left alone and just live their lives. Correct. That their is family. exactly right. They're the ones that just say, you know what? If there's a family gathering and there's a fight, the 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 liberal will fight on for hours. Conservative is going to say, I'm just going to sleep. But then it's right. liberal won the fight. So That's I, correct. I yeah. see a bit more of a fight. This is good. I want to see there being a fight. I like the Lakers against Chicago. I like Fox. Yes. But well, I, I, I fight. <laughs> I, we need one more. I think we need one more. I think we need somebody in the middle, mm -hmm. either a media company or a social media company, that competes with everybody and allows content to stay on. Because That's right. That's all we need. We don't need a conservative site. We need an open one. I want the left to have access. I have zero desire to suppress the left. Zero. I have to say, if I have a friend, and I know this man very well, he's a good friend of mine, and if we can get him and a few other names to go out there and create an open social media platform with some additional perks and nice gamification aspects to it, independent, independent, open to everybody, left, right, middle, up, down, whatever it is, you can come right. down and create content. Yes. What what would happen to create momentum for a company like that? Who do you think would get behind it? Well, you, you just said who would get behind it. People with the money to start something that allowed everyone on, and it got publicized, and kids became aware there's, there's an alternative. Look, YouTube has almost a monopoly, <laughs> so it's difficult to, uh, to compete with them. Uh, and it, it, just the staggering amount that's on there. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on there a lot. And, I, and I'm very happy about that. But, but it, you know, it, it's dangerous. It, it is truly dangerous. See, the problem is this. People always say to me, well, why don't you just start a conservative alternative to YouTube since they put 100 of your videos on, uh, uh, on the restricted list? So I say that's like saying, um, you know, uh, with Delta, American, and United say you can't fly. Start your own airline. <laughs> it, it's not that easy. Then if somebody's asking if anybody close to you has died from coronavirus. No. Nobody. Nobody close to me has lost their business. So it, 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 these these issues are asking that question is meaningless. It, it's it, it's like people uh, will, will say if you haven't experienced it, therefore what? I, I, I don't live in Bangladesh. Am I not allowed to feel for the guy who lost his business selling jeans to American companies? I mean, I might as well say, so I, I don't know what the question means. And I know I wouldn't change my mind if someone close to me, I don't base my opinions on the tragedies of my life. That's the opposite of wisdom. That's feelings. That, that question is exactly what has happened in America. We have substituted feelings for wisdom, feelings for thought. Please elaborate. Yes, because what does the question imply? If, if I knew somebody who died of the coronavirus, I would feel differently. I might feel differently, but I wouldn't think differently. How I feel is irrelevant. We live in the age of feelings. I've written about this. It's on the internet. It's called the age of feelings. It, in, in, in high school, kids are asked, how do you feel about it? Parents ask their kids, how do you feel about it? It doesn't mean a damn thing how you feel about it. What do you think? What have you reasoned through? What are your values? Feelings? Feelings are beautiful between two people, but you don't base moral ideals. And I, give, I have my classic answer. 
Who would you say first, your dog or a stranger, if both were drowning? Most Americans today, I've asked this question for 40 years, 40. And uh, uh, the the ones I asked 40 years ago are now 60. And uh, uh, I they... Uh, they, they say, oh, I would save my dog. Why would you save your dog? Because I love my dog. I don't love the stranger. But that, in my value system, is the wrong answer. I believe human beings are more valuable than animals because I, be, I, am, a, I am a Jew who believes in the Bible, just as a Christian would. And we are created in God's image, dogs or not. I own two dogs whom I love. I would save a stranger before my two dogs even though I would feel much more love for my dogs than a stranger. I don't love strangers, but I do what is right, and I don't follow my feelings. That's a very deep statement. Somebody could call it cold, you know. Uh, uh, no, it's very warm. You speak to the stranger's family afterwards who said, you know, my dad was drowning. Why didn't you save him? And you'll say, oh, because I love my dog. Who's cold exactly? I'm, I'm, I'm on your side. I have two dogs, and if I see a stranger, I'm going to go out there and save them. I, I fully understand, but some, some people will call it cold. Some people will say Yes, so, 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 of course they will, because they assess it based on feelings. Cold is a feelings issue. Do you think it's, it's good the fact that politically America is so divided right now? Do you think that's a good thing? No. So you, why, why don't you think it's a good, you think it's good that we, if we all got along and we agree, you think that'd be a better place to be? If we all got along with, with what I believe in, it would be better. If we all got along with what the left believes in, it would be the end of America. So it depends, you know, but I'm being on, totally honest with you. Stop if everybody agreed with you. You would be jobless. That's fine. It's better for America if everyone agreed with me and I would be jobless. I'm prepared to be jobless for America to be a better place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You see, to me, it's the other way around. I, I, I think opposition is good because it toughens us up. I think a little bit of that is good. Like, I like the fact that life provides enough opposition without having morons tell you uh, that bigger government and being taken care of instead of liberty is a good thing. <laughs> Believe me, life has enough challenge without having people ruin it for you. I think you secretly love liberals because you like a good fight. I know I you do not secretly love, I, well, I secretly love liberals, but I do not secretly love leftists. I draw a big distinction between liberal and left. For some, I know, I know you explained it to me last time, but for some who don't know the difference, can you tell us? Yeah, I'll give you one big uh, example. Uh, leftists believe in black dormitories and black graduations at colleges. Liberals do not. Liberals believe in racial integration. Leftists believe in racial segregation. Okay, for some who don't have a PhD, can you break that down, please? Yes. Uh, many colleges have all black dormitories. The, the last time we had all black dormitories was in the South when it was segregated. I was raised a liberal. Liberals believe in racial integration. Racial segregation is dormitories based on race. I'm completely opposed to that. I don't want all white dormitories. I don't want all yellow dormitories, all red dormitories, or all black dormitories. The whole purpose of America is to integrate. Is uh, I have two neighbors. I live in a, I live in a, a dead end. One is uh, uh, Arab from Syria, Lebanon, and one is from Korea. I love that. That's And I'm a Jew. This is America. But you also want everybody to agree with what you grow, what you believe in. Yeah, that's correct. The basic Judeo-Christian American values that founded this country. That's a very, it's a very good system. It's made a good place. What are the chances of it ever happening where everybody agrees on the same system? For a large percentage of American history, there was a general agreement in what I call the American Trinity, the three things that are on every American coin. Liberty, e pluribus unum, meaning from many one. We come from many backgrounds, but we become American. And in God we trust that there was a supreme being who is the source of our rights, which is in the Declaration of Independence. All I ask is Americans accept that. They can differ on a thousand other things. 
Dennis, can you say liberty three times? Can I say what three times? Liberty. Liberty? Liberty, liberty, liberty? You know what you sounded like for a second? That commercial. Liberty, liberty, liberty. I thought oh. it was for a second. <laughs> what you I don't about? watch enough TV to have said that. I would have. You to do the commercial. It's making sense now. You're making all your money from these advertising dollars you're getting. The yeah, I, I, I wish. Yours. So, look, why don't we wrap up with a little bit of lighthearted stuff? You used to do, uh, uh, did you do something on your radio about love? I don't know what it was called. It was about love, relationships. Yeah, yeah. On my radio show, which people, DennisPrager.com, you can find out or, or write me at DennisPrager.com and tell you what station and how you can hear me. But three hours a day I broadcast. Wednesdays, the second hour of my show is called the male female hour. And I, uh, it's, I, I say it's the most honest talk about men and women in the American media. And as I say uh, almost every week, I'm not a man fan and I'm not a woman fan. I'm a fan of clarity and I'm a fan that they get along better. But I don't root for either sex. I, I, I don't, I don't believe one is better than the other. There are disgusting men and disgusting women and beautiful men and beautiful women. Do you think if you were 28 years old today, 28-year-old Dennis Prager, would you even think about getting married during times like this? There's no question I would. Tell, tell, tell well, us. People got married during the Depression. People got married uh, during World War II. Jews got married after the Holocaust, after their whole families were wiped out. Either you believe in marriage, you get married because you believe in marriage. It's a perfect example of the feelings issue. Well, I'll get married when I feel like getting married. No, you get married because that's how you grow up. Ask anyone who's been married. I don't care if they've been divorced. Did marriage mature you? Every single human who has been married will say yes. But people don't want to be mature. They want to be safe. Do you think marriage should have terms? <laughs> Well, I have lived that, but uh, and it's not my recommendation. <laughs> the ideal, look, the ideal is that, that you grow together and you, you, you stay together. It's a challenge. Well, my, parents, my parents were together for 72 years. What if marriage is like every four years you campaign and you ask family whether you should stay together? Well, actually, actually, there is, uh, I do have a, a variation on that. You should, if you're married, you should work to earn your spouse's love just as you work to earn their love before you were married. Never take your spouse for granted. That's the single biggest piece of advice I, could, I give people. People get married and then they think, oh, I got him. I got her. I don't have to work to get her. My, you know what my favorite word, my favorite verb? Earn. I know singles who have a different favorite verb, but, uh, you know, it's... Different. Yes, I understand that. But uh, they'll get more of that if they get married and do have a good marriage. Respect. Very deep message right there. It was a spiritual message, what you just said right there. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, if people want a lot of these messages, they can go to my website. They can read my books like The Rational Bible. And they could go to Prager University and, and listen to I, There's a lot of vehicles where I offer my thoughts and I earn, hopefully, their respect for having some wisdom. Dennis, we're going to take this and we're going to post this on one of our YouTube channels so they can find it. Folks, if you want to find it, I'll post it on my Instagram for you guys to see it if you missed the live from the beginning. Uh, when the dust settles and everything settles down and we can travel, I look forward to our next face-to-face -face visit with having your two dogs on the show. That, that's a deal. We, I'd love that. Dennis, uh, congratulations. You have officially done your first Instagram Live. Everybody go follow him and message him for doing his first Instagram Yeah, I would love to hear from the people who see this. That's right. Okay. Take care, buddy. Good talking to you. Be well, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.